Hey friends, thank you so much for clicking on to this video. My name is Toya Akino, so I'm the editorial lead here at Our God Given Mission. And this episode, we have a very, very special guest with us. And we came across her story um, a few weeks ago. We just had to sit down with her and find out a bit more. But I'll let her introduce herself, but over to you, Faith. Who are you? Hi, Hi guys. Um, my name is Faith. Um, my name is Faith Georgie. Um, I was an ex-Muslim, I am now a disciple of Jesus, and yeah, that's just a little bit about myself. Amazing, yeah, so we just kind of thought we'd kind of record this video to really get to hear your testimony and, and, and the journey from kind of growing up in a Muslim household to now being, as you said, mm. a fully-fledged disciple and follower of Jesus Christ. I guess we can kind of start with the very beginning. So kind of what is your backstory um, growing up in a Muslim household? What was that like for you? Yeah, so growing up, um, my whole family are Muslim. I'm from a country where it's a 95% Muslim country. Um, you know, in my younger years, I wasn't really a serious Muslim. I wasn't really practicing. My family are not even one that I could say are like proper serious practicing Muslims. I will call them more so Muslim by name. Um, so when I was like 16, I really just had this urge to take my faith seriously in Islam and just stop certain things that I was doing at the time. I didn't really find any pleasure in the things that I was doing. So I started to look at Islam. I started to seek and just like ask questions about my faith through different people that I knew and just watching different things and I decided to take my shahada which is basically when you base give your life to Allah <laughs> and you proclaim that you know that Muhammad yeah okay but so I did that and I became a practicing Muslim um someone that was radical someone that people would call an extremist or but I just simply saw it as someone that's taking their faith seriously at the time. Yeah. Um, I joined this local mosque near mine where I eventually actually started teaching in. Um, I was going out just sharing things about Islam, trying to convert different people, predominantly Christians. Um, you know, I was just going around really teaching even women as well about Islam and to just really help them to take Islam seriously. Um, but yeah, I was really much a radical, you know, to the point where I was planning to go to ISIS, to go and do jihad um, as well. And unfortunately, I've even lost a few friends um, through that, that had went and stuff. But yeah, that's basically in a nutshell of my life. Wow. <laughs> Oh, wow, there's this, there's this, yeah, there's, there's so much in that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think what, one thing yeah. that, that, I, that really struck me when um, I first came across your story and your testimony, because you kind of hear, I've seen, I've seen a fair few kind of nominal Muslims come to know Christ, come to know the gospel, and, and they kind of convert and grow to God. But you rarely kind of see these people who were very yeah. much in, um, in their faith, in Islam. You kind of mentioned being an extremist, um, thinking to go to ISIS and just kind of hearing your conversion story is just so amazing and it's such an amazing testimony to God but then what really what changed then in, in this journey so you mentioned at 16 you went to take your Islamic faith seriously how did you then come to know the gospel of Jesus Christ? Okay so it was actually at university um, first year um, Freshers Fair so they had different stores at my university campus and, you know, as I was going around looking at different societies that I may sign up to, um, there was this Christian society, but I didn't know there was a Christian society. So I just went over to them and just started asking them about what they're doing. And um, someone started to explain to me that um, what it was, but they didn't really go into about it being a Christian society. And there must have been, there was this person there that I started to speak to and um they basically said that they were fasting and I was really shocked I was like what Christians fast what's the rest of it? I didn't know because all the Christians that I knew before no one would you know express their faith to me you know they were very much in the world very much lukewarm and just doing certain things that I just okay so I was really shocked like Christians actually fast and then he was like yeah what, what's your views on Christianity 
kind of thing. So I started to express it to him. And then he started to simply just share why he was fasting and just how much he loves God and why God loves him. So he started, he started to break down the gospel to me and I just couldn't fathom it. I was just like, wow, what, what is this that he's talking about? And because I never met a Christian that actually knew the Bible that could come back and just be going back and forth with different scriptures, I was just like, okay, I need to know where you're getting this knowledge from. Mm -hmm. I need to know what's happening. So they invited me to their church and I was like, I'm going to go to your church. So that was for me like the first time that I really heard the gospel in its fullness and just really hear and seeing someone just express how much they love God and how much God loves them. That to me was just like, wow even though my agenda wasn't that great because I was planning to go to their church so that I can get him converted and his whole church converted as well so <laughs> but, but yeah so how, how, how was that journey then from okay like your interest was kind of peaked like okay you thought okay maybe there's, there's a bit more to this Christianity thing I've heard the gospel I'm going to go out and try my hardest to convert them how did you go from that to then kind of dedicating your life and, and giving your life to Jesus okay so with that agenda in mind I was basically a spy in the church so I say <laughs> this is so bad but um, cause I would go back and feed back to my other Muslim um, Ufki sisters and this organization that I was part of where we actually go out and convert Christians and stuff. So I would tell them that, okay, this is, this is the, this is a different kind of people because the people that we used to meet before and who were really easy to convert into Islam, they didn't really know their Bible, but these people, like a lot of them know their Bible. They know what they're talking about. They're not just doing it because they've been forced to or they've been Christian their whole life. So it was like, okay, there's a new set of people go here. So my mission there was to stay there and try to see how we can convert these people. But, you know, I started to have different encounters. I started to have visions. You know, I even started to speak in tongues one time and I just thought like, these people have done black magic on me because <laughs> that's happening. Like, honestly, that's what I genuinely thought. And then, uh, yeah, I started having different visions, to have different encounters. I was getting different attacks. And every time I would get an attack, this lion would appear to me. This, um, the same, the same particular thing would be happening to me. Um, so there was another fellowship as well that I actually went to where they were asking me different questions but as I was entering the the room of this fellowship I just felt like fire all over me and I just didn't understand at the time what that meant however I went back to the fellowship a couple of weeks after and there was this brother there who shared who was sharing his testimony the fact that he was an ex-Muslim and at the time I was just like oh ex-Muslims you know Muslims don't like ex-Muslims so yeah. <laughs> we just look at them like how can you betray us like that you're such a traitor so I was just like not really interested in his story but then he expressed that he was from Ireland I'm from I grew up in Ireland so I was just like oh my gosh okay yeah I'm gonna listen so after the service he actually came to pray for me and <clears throat> during while, while he was praying for me I felt like I went into this vision or this just different realm, different place. And um, it was just me in this room. And as I'm in that room, I open my eyes and there's this like, just this cool air just all around me. It's just it's so serene and so peaceful. And I see this lion that been keep coming into my dreams, keep rescuing me in my dreams, keep, um, you know, my family were heavy in witchcraft. So I used to get a lot of visitations from witches. And there was this one particular time this witch came and I remember this lion coming into my room and actually taking the head of this um, particular witch. So I was just seeing this lion, but the lion didn't say anything to me. I didn't say anything to the lion. And it was just looking at me and it's like, as if it was just kind of like there was some subtle smile. Um, coming from this particular lion and that for me was really significant because I was just like I keep getting dreams what's going on what's happening and why is has this lion come in this room in this Christian fellowship so I remember going back home and doing my last prayer and you know Muslims pray five times a day so I was doing my last prayer and 
as I was just sitting down on my prayer mat, I'm just there asking like, Allah, like what's happening? Like I'm going to this Christian stuff, you know, you know, I'm an ambassador for Islam. Why am I keep getting these visions of this lion and stuff like that? But I was just really puzzled and baffed. And, you know, unfortunately in, in, in Islam, you know, Allah doesn't speak to you like Jehovah speaks to us. And so I didn't hear anything back. And as I'm just sitting there, just confused and just like, you know, what's, go what's going on here? And I was just like, okay, I'm gonna pray to this God of Christianity. Um, so I was just like, God of Christianity, if you are real or whatever, like just sh just show yourself, like show yourself if you actually are like, what's you know? And as I'm just sitting there, I just hear this voice saying, I am the way, the truth and the life. Yeah. Literally heard that three, three times. I heard that three times and I was just thinking, okay because you know, <laughs> i was so aware of i thought okay maybe it's like a like some jinn speaking to me or something like that <laughs> jinn is basically like demon in islam and stuff like that maybe maybe it's just my own mind but then i decided to go back to this church on their sunday service and as i was there the pastor's like um let's go to John 14, six. I, I don't really know the Bible at that time. I don't really know the scriptures. And I remember there was this person, I was like, you know, pointing it out to where it was. And I'm hearing this saying, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the father except through me. And I was thinking, wait, hold up a minute. Mm -hmm. I just heard that the same. I just heard that the other night, what's going on here? So I was just like, I couldn't speak. I remember that day, I just could not speak. Cause I was thinking, this is some scary stuff. Like what's actually happening here? And I remember going back home, just crying. Cause I just, I just didn't understand what was going on. And I was just crying and I was just speaking to Allah, even though I knew I wasn't going to get any response back. And I was just saying, you know, I've, I've literally gave up my life for you. Everything I do, even the fact that, that I'm at university, I'm planning after university to go to like my whole life is dedicated to you and why is this religion if this religion is not the truth why am I getting these encounters and why did I hear this thing um before so I was just there and I was just something in me just knew that this was the truth because so many things were happening that I couldn't explain from the encounters that were happening in the church you know just the dreams and the visions that I was getting it just didn't make sense that this religion could be a lie and that this religion wasn't the truth or and stuff so in that moment as I was there crying I just said God of Christianity <laughs> I'm going to give my life to you in faith that was literally my words give my life to you in faith and I was just like God of Christianity um I believe that Jesus died for me and he was Amen. raised from the dead and that was so significant for me to say because even when I was at the church you know some of the the teaching was very good but every time they mentioned Jesus I was like no nah, I don't want to hear it <laughs> every time they mentioned the resurrection I'm like nah that these people are they, why are you blaspheming I used to think I was blaspheming so that was such a big thing for me so in that moment saying those words was so significant wow. and that was literally in a nutshell the beginning of my journey that's like it just kind of fills me with so much joy just kind of hearing that whole story and there's, there's obviously so much kind of more kind of detail in there that probably we don't have time to go into but just hearing those kind of words that Jesus died for me and by faith in him and him alone he is the way he is the truth he is the life it just yeah. just really just encapsulates that, that gospel message and you and you responded to it which is just absolutely brilliant and I guess it's just the last question like how how has your life now changed now being a Christian to what it was however many years ago? What has been kind of the major difference you've seen in your life? I think for me, just when I became a Christian, the way that my character, my personality, there was just so many things that was just a facade. Like God literally transformed me from the inside out so I think for me that was the most the biggest thing just finding finding out different things about myself healing and just being able to have a relationship coming to a place of total dependency on God knowing that you have a father 
who loves you regardless of what you do. It's not because of what you do that he loves you. He just loves you because he created you and he created you in love and his nature is love. So for me, my journey has been one of just complete fellowship, complete union and um, yeah. with God, with my maker, the creator of this world. And I think my biggest lessons as well is just, you know, just how much God loves us, how much God loves people and the, the sacrifice God has done and what he's will, willing to do um, um, for every single person. And just, you know, it hasn't been an easy journey, I'm not gonna lie, but it's one of those of great trust, it's one of those of great faith. And, you know, I, I still have um, backlash from my family in terms of me giving my life. I remember the, when they first found out that I gave my life to Christ, I was living at my auntie's house and she actually ended up kicking me out of her house at 2 a.m. in the morning. I had nowhere to go to. I was basically homeless. And, you know, I didn't, they, they basically dis disowned me. I didn't speak to them for a good two years. Um, but, you know, recently I've, they've come back into my life, but I'm still getting family opposition to just, please don't preach the gospel, please don't share your faith. And, you know, I was getting death threats, you know, because in Islam, when you leave, you're not allowed to leave Islam, you have to be in it forever kind of things. So I was getting death threats. I was just, you know, they were doing witchcraft on me to try to get me back. And so there's, it's been a lot um, within my journey, but just seeing the growth within myself, the growth to, you know, just even loving people, how you love people, my nature, and just being a disciple who sold out for God, who truly just mm -hmm. loves God and just, and I'm able to do all those things because he loves me. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so amazing for, for so many different reasons. Um, I guess at, at OGGM, our, our aim and our passion is to help millennials know and preach the gospel, not just to have like this head knowledge of who God is, but to actually equip them and mobilize them to go around and share their faith. And you are living proof of the impact of that when when christians take that the, the, the commandment in matthew 28 to go out and preach the gospel to all nations yeah. so i guess lastly what what bit of advice or encouragement would you give to christians to to leave the comforts of their their seat um of their own home to go out and share the gospel what piece of advice or encouragement would you give to them oh gosh just i think of it in this way there is so many people in this world that are depressed, that are lonely, that are looking for a way out, that are looking for solutions. And we have been given the solutions for every man's issue in this world. We have, you know, the Bible says that we are set apart, that we are called to be light in this world. We cannot sit down as believers. You're not saved for yourself. And I think a lot of believers think that, they're safe for themselves but you're not safe for your, for yourself you're safe for someone else yeah. your neighbor you know especially in this current crisis that we're in so many people have died that have not heard the gospel but just simply simply sharing to someone that Jesus loves you you do not know how much that can change and transform someone's life it is a seed that has been sown just simple words just going out of your way to even help your neighbor can change their life for me personally I was around Christians, but none of them ever, ever shared their faith with me. If it wasn't for that one person that was like, wait, hold up a minute. You know what? I'm going to express to you this God of mine and share the gospel. They simply shared to me their story and why they loved God. And that was what? That was a seed that now led me, even though I had, you know, bad intentions, but it led me to where I am today. So I'll just say to the believers out there, just don't think about it. Just go and do it because the more you ponder on it the more you be like oh I'm scared I'm fearful I can't do it it's not by might it's not by power but by his spirit says the Lord mm. yield your fear to God yield your worries to God and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and to speak through you just yield and just yield and you know look at the story of Paul you know he says do you not we shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel this good news that we have we have the solution you have the antidote you have the medicine for every single person you have the cure for everything within your hands so we have to be bold about these things we have to go and express these things and Paul said something that woe to me if I do not preach this gospel 
woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. And I, and I, I, I see it the same way, woe to me if I do not share my faith. <laughs> I'm someone, my family are literally begging me, please stop sharing your faith. Please just be like one of those Christians that just sit back and don't share. Like these are the exact words that I get from my mom, my dad, just telling me, please do not share your faith. Stop posting stuff about your faith. Stop talk, talking to people about your faith. But I'm just like, I can't do that because that's selfish of me. We need to come out of a place where we're, where, where we're not selfish anymore. And we think about people, where do you, what do you want? Imagine living your life and just not knowing like what's out there and you're keeping it all to yourself. So I think believers, we just need to, don't think about it, just go out, just honestly go out and share the love of God. It's not about if you know Genesis, from Genesis to Revelation, Revelation to Genesis, just simply share the love of God. Simply go out and just be that love to others. So yeah. Thank you so, so much for that. And you, you've been such a great source of encouragement and inspiration for, for so many, many people out there. And if you'd like to find out more about Faith, all, all her kind of details and social media will be in the description down below. We can kind of follow her and her journey and her ministry. Um, but thank you so much for sitting down with us. And, and thank you guys at home as well for listening. Um, I'd very much encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, check out Faith's channel as well. And make sure to stay plugged to our God-given mission where we have more videos like this every single week. But thank you guys and take care.